jib jib bamboos on new canoes all pippity pop she call you jib jib bamboos on new canoes all pippity pop she call i mean you keep on talking but you don't know where to turn it <laughs> Welcome to the new year. I'm John Caldera. You're watching Independent Thinking. Oh, by the way, I run a little organization called the Independence Institute. Check us out sometime at independenceinstitute.org. We thought we'd take a look and try some predictions for the new year from the editorial board of the Denver Post. You know him, you love him, you see him all the time. Dan Haley. Actually, you only see your mugshot. Right. The, <laughs> this is the larger version. This is the larger <laughs> version. The mugshot actually looks a little better. Yeah, you thanks. see him moving on all the time. Adam Schrager from Channel 9 News and also from your show uh, on Channel yeah. 9. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh, and thanks for inviting me on your show. That was really nice of you. I, I appreciated that. We'll <laughs> have good. a reciprocating agreement somewhere down the line. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. sure we do. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's, <laughs> let's get to it. A brand new year, uh, and this is going to be the fun one. I mean, this is this is the year where it all happens. Does the Obama revolution continue? Do does he lose seats in in the House? We've got the the Senate seat, and of course the ever popular governor seat. And who knows what type of initiatives we we go. So let's let's go local and statewide first. Bill Ritter is in trouble. He's what we like to say vulnerable. And to be vulnerable in a state like Colorado for an incumbent says a lot. I, I would still think he's got a good shot of, of winning re-election, but you, you tell me, you've been, you've been covering the, the state house for a long time. What's different right now in this, this year compared to past incumbents running for governor? I think he realizes, John, that, that the situation is such certain factors are out of his control. I mean, the economy struggling nationally, certainly struggling here in Colorado. I think he realizes that he can't necessarily be overly optimistic and say, look at all the great things that we've done in three years, when really it always comes back to that question, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Situations out of his control, a lot of people here in Colorado are going to answer no. Um, and so while he's vulnerable at the same time, he also has a pretty strong infrastructure, that being the progressive infrastructure that's behind any major Democratic candidate here in the state of Colorado. And it'll be interesting to You're see. You're talking about the Pat Stryker, Tim Gill uh, machinery. Uh, yes. Um, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not the Republicans, I mean, all this talk about unification is all well and good at the party level from an ideology standpoint, but does it really play out practically when people actually start casting votes? Bring it over here. I agree. I think a lot of it depends on how Scott McGinnis's campaign plays out in 2010. Uh, Ritter is definitely vulnerable. And what I think you're going to see is the independents who decide all the elections in Colorado and who have voted, dem vote la voted largely for the Democrats the last three election cycles in Colorado, 2008, 2006, and in 2004, when they gave Democrats control of the state house, those people are going to go to the right and vote for the Republican in this race, which makes, which makes Ritter even more vulnerable. There's a general perception out there that he hasn't done a heck of a lot. Um, he promised a lot of things early on. People will be going through the Colorado Promise to see what he's been actually been able to do. The budget then hurts him because a lot of those things cost money and you can't do them. Uh, and so he, and he's had to cut programs. He's even now cutting K-12 and these things that he holds very dear to his heart. He's had to make tough decisions and that's going to anger people. Well, let me throw this out. We're political junkies, all right? So we're looking at, at the situation, and we know even within his own party, there are a lot of people who look at Ritter and go, oh, my God, I can't believe he's doing such a poor job as an administrator. No matter how you feel about his political points of view, I think we'd all agree that Bill Owens and Roy Romer before him uh, ran that office with an with a iron fist. There was control. There was accountability. You might have disagreed with them, and they'd cut you off of the knees, but it's as if they knew what they were doing. But then again, they, had, they were state reps and state senators and state treasurers. They knew that business. But for, as you said, the great unwashed, the uh, unaffiliated, they don't follow that stuff. They don't follow what's going on as sharply as we do. We don't, they don't see other Democrats nipping at his, at his heels as well. So I, I still would give an advantage to Ritter because the incumbency in this state is golden. And, and John, what they're already seeing, I mean, if you look back in October, 
of 2009, there are already commercials being run for Colorado's on the move, a 501c4 a benefiting Governor Ritter, right. talking about the new energy economy. I mean, if you talk about where they're plugged in and what they're seeing, they're going to see commercials for a long time now from folks who are supportive of Governor Ritter's policies. Oh, but I think that the also, new energy. If I had a dime for every time I heard new energy economy, I think that also tells you how vulnerable he is. That there are literally groups out there who are already starting his reelection campaign for him and telling you that Colorado's moving forward and isn't it great? How well we're doing? People vote with their pocketbooks. The Republicans can make a real issue here. The economy's still going to be bad in November of 2010. My guess, right? I mean, that's what all the economists are telling us. Republicans can make a real issue out of the property tax freeze, out of faster these things where your fees your fees go. Up you know, the only one that, that I think is hurt the, the only one that I think is really going to hit now. The the property tax freeze. So our property taxes are going up. Most people don't realize that was a Ritter led initiative. So they'll just complain about it. Same thing with faster and a lot of these other new fees that have come up. If you're getting married, if you're getting divorced, you'll go to a hospital. There's no now no five percent fee there as well. The one that's really going to hurt them surprisingly is going to be the car registration fee. And this was the one people actually had to take out their pen, right. write down a check, and right. go, what? It's how much? And if it's late, it's another hundred bucks? That one got people's it, attention. It took him a little while, I think, and I think even his administration would say it took him a little while to kind of get the messaging down on that. And now I think he's he's found his footing, at least, and the argument that they're putting forward is, on my watch, I don't want to be the governor who oversees one of these 128 bridges collapsing, like the I-35W right. bridge over Minneapolis or over St. Paul. Um, that's the messaging that he's saying is, you know, if you need to pay, on average, an extra $40, an extra, even though for some people, obviously, it's significantly more than $40, for some people, it's right around, that's the average that they're calculating that's they finally gotten the messaging down I and mean, I don't think people quite got the idea of hey you know we have we need to put more money into transportation we don't have any sustainable transportation but at the funding. same time, to the average person that he, doesn't mean anything you know, he was the one who changed the bird arbor scale the six percent limit mm -hmm. took that away which basically for people who don't know anything that was over six percent would go into capital funding like transportation so now he's hurt transportation which means that he needs to find money elsewhere like like the car registration tax you know I, and I these are inside maneuvers that I'm afraid that most people don't have the time, patience, uh, or money to, to, to look at. That's why we junkies eat this up. Well, I'm not convinced other folks will. And I think that's why Coloradans love to reelect their governors. What has it been, 50 years? 50. Since, mm -hmm. since, since, uh, since we threw one out of office. So, and he has that going for him. The, the thing that everybody says across the board about Bill Ritter is he's such a nice, nice guy. guy. He's right? a nice guy, and, but, but dot, that, dot, but dot. But that means something. People vote, as I said earlier with their pocketbook, they also vote with their heart and how they feel about people. A guest you've had on this program, I'm sure before, Dick Wadhams always used to say every election comes down to the fact of just who's more likable. Right. You know, and at the end of the day, who was more likable be behind, between Wayne Allard and Tom Strickland? That's what he would argue. He'd say, you know, all things being equal, e even if they're not equal, person at home, eh, I like that well, guy better. I like that woman better. Check. Let's yet, talk a yet little there's bit. a huge anti-incumbent mood sweeping, sweeping the country right now, and he's going to have to contend with that as well. And he but, knows it. That's, yeah. that's, I think he's, he's cognizant of that yeah. right now. Well, knowing it and doing something about it is different. Well, let, let's talk about his supposed challenger. Right now, it looks as though my team has coalesced again around uh, Scott McGinnis, although I think there's still a lot of people who feel that Scott McGinnis is, is old guard and what they want is something new. Why was it, do you think, that the main, his main challenger, uh, Josh Penry, state senator, dropped out? What changed? I can't imagine something substantial changed that he was unaware of. Uh, to a certain extent, I think when I talked to him right after that decision, uh, you get a sense, and even if you talk to him right now, you get a sense he sincerely believed he would have won, not just the primary, but won the general election. But the amount of money it would have taken him to raise in the primary, somewhere in the area he was estimating four to six million dollars simply to win a primary, all the while those groups like Colorado's on the move are spending millions of dollars in favor of Governor Ritter, would have put <coughs> that general election in a very difficult position, not even to mention any of the other Republican offices statewide and certainly at the state capitol as well. Um, he's 33 years old. The guy's yeah. got a long, long time God, to go. I hate young people. And I just I, hate young people. I'm older than he is by seven I, years. You I, would, you, I like. I, yeah. <laughs> I would also say that he, uh, he is a young person, and you don't know the toll 
that something like this takes on your family. And he has yeah. a, he has two young kids and a wife, and I think he lives in Grand Junction. It's not like he lives in Denver, you know. So it's not easy to get around the state and be here for work, etc. So I think all that comes into play. And there's also a chance, given the fact, as we've said, Coloradans like to reelect their governors, that this is an open seat in 2014. He can run for his state senate seat in November 2010, get reelected, and in 2014. But what changed, governor against Ken what, changed, what changed between him dropping out of the race and four months before? I can't see any real change unless, I think unless there's, there's some great black know. and white photographs that, that no, I'd love to I see. No, I don't think, I, I've never heard anybody say there's any sort of scandal attached, attached to Josh Penry.